Hello students, this video will go over the steps for creating a digital mandala using myoats.com. Uh, as we look at these examples, uh, I want you to notice the similarities in the style and type of the design, but also uh, the how the artists are using color and color harmony to create mood in their artwork. These are choices that you do want to think about. So first, let's talk a little bit about what is a mandala. Uh, so mandalas are spiritual symbols found in cultures all over the world, and they are inspired by shapes and forms found in nature. That symmetrical design uh, is considered a form of meditation or concentration practice. Uh, the design itself is known as what's called radial symmetry. So this is where there is more than one line of symmetry, uh, where if you cut the mandala in half in multiple points and or folded it in half, it would be identical on both sides. And there is usually a central, singular central access point in a mandala. So typically, you know, you'll see this in flowers, in some fruits. Um, also, snowflakes are examples of more geometric style mandalas. Uh, in terms of cultural references, you know, often mandalas are associated with Buddhist san mandalas. The word itself, mandala, comes from uh, Sanskrit language. So these mandalas would be made over the course of a week using individual grains of colored sand. And then at the end of that week, the mandala would be swept up and the sand would be uh, ceremoniously dumped into a nearby river or stream. Uh, but then also outside of Buddhist iconography, you'll find that same circular radial symmetry in mandalas in South America and Aztec culture uh, in, you know, here in North America, the Native American Indian uh, mandalas here. How usually there's more, um, geometric design going on in the more Native American patterns. Uh, in Islamic art, you'll see mandala or symmetrical images uh, radiating around either seven or eight pointed star uh, with some sort of floral or plant motifs mixed in. And then last but not least, uh, in European stained glass churches, you would see, uh, you sometimes see a circular mandala type design. Um, all of these have that trademark balance down the middle through the sides. So with that, let's get into myoats.com and go over how you would create your own digital mandala. All right, so I'm here in the myoats.com interface. If you don't know uh, where to find this program or this online application, uh, please go check out Google Classroom. Uh, there is a link to the website where you'll be working. Uh, and a couple of things, when you first open this program, it will default to a totally random color choice for background. So this was yellow. Um, if uh, a little bit about the interface and get into how we do this, on the left-hand side, you'll have the transparency adjustment slider and also the brush size adjustment sliders. Uh, it will default to uh, one, I believe. And then at the bottom is your toolbar. So you'll have settings, undo and redo, zoom, and then your brush choices. And within brush choices, you have round brush, a tapered brush that will give you a more pointed edge, an airbrush that will give you a more soft fuzzy line thing and then you have a line tool which will give you a straight line next in the toolbar you have the air the eraser tool and within air within the eraser you have either round tapered or airbrush as well here you have color menu where you can hover over it and it will allow you to choose you know whatever color is going to be the foreground um, or uh, white and then you can also set colors here so if I like know that I'm going to be using a lot of pink I can right click over one of these boxes to kind of set a palette of colors that I might want to use I can also swipe this to kind of set 
um, some other ones. If I want to delete a color, you just kind of hover over it and then click delete. So if I wanted to do dark purple, light purple, and pink, I could set my palette. Next, you have a layers panel. So this is where we're going to go and get into how to adjust. Um, this top layer is just a little layer that kind of darkens the corners. You can have it on, you can have it off. I'm going to turn it off for now. We're going to be doing all of our outlines on the top layer and then use these two layers for color. And then this is where I can change the background color to whatever color I want. So I'm going to change it to kind of a, like a, a light teal green. And I'm going to use a purple over it, purple lines over it. So now I'm going to click on the top layer and start doing my design work. So when we looked at mandalas, there were kind of two options for doing line work. There was geometric, uh, meaning everything had straight lines. So if you do want to do geometric style, that would be using this straight line tool. And anywhere that I draw a straight line, it will um, kind of connect and turn into a little star. So as of right now, this is set for, uh, let's see how many, six sides. So there's six guidelines that are reflecting whatever I draw and repeating it over and over and over again into a perfect star. And I really only need to worry about drawing within one pie wedge. I can just do work in this one place. Let me make a couple skinny lines. And it will automatically repeat all the way around to get that kind of design. Let's undo all of that. If you want to change the amount of sides, go into settings. And there's, you can play with this scroll wheel. The only thing is I would recommend staying between four and eight points. I would also highly recommend that you keep mirroring turned on and that you keep guides turned on so you can actually see where the guides are. And the way mirroring works is you only really have to, you only ever have to draw on one half of your pie wedge and it will automatically flip it to the other half of the pie wedge. If mirroring is turned off, you kind of have to cover the whole, oh wait, mirroring is still on. The program is a little glitchy, I apologize. If mirroring is turned off, um, you know, it will kind of create a different style design, but what it does, it won't do is it won't, um, you know, connect in the middle. It gives you more freedom to do kind of a slightly different style of design. So let me undo, 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 undo. Uh, so that was using line tool to create a geometric style mandala. If you want to do more of a floral design, use like either the tapered brush or the round brush. And you're going to use, I, I like for flowers, like to keep mirroring turned on because it makes it easier to do, you know, petal style with little points or little bumps. Um, maybe put a little line inside. When you're designing your mandala, you want to think about at least five layers to your shape. So I might zoom out so I can see kind of the whole canvas that I'm working with. But you want five concentric shapes or shapes inside of shapes inside of shapes. If your lines don't touch the guides, so for example, if I put a something here, it does it will just kind of repeat. It will not reflect. So if I did kind of like a heart shape, it would repeat. If I wanted to turn mirroring off, I could do something more uh, interesting, maybe like let's do a bumblebee. So I'll kind of press the space bar, move over. Let's do a bee. So that's my little quick bumblebee. 
Um, ideally, I probably would have used yellow for that. So let me change it to a yellow and color it in at least a different color. So let me go over it again with a little yellow so it becomes clear that this is definitely a bumblebee and a little black, black stripes. And if we zoom out, I drew one bumblebee, but now I have, you know, six because it automatically reflects around that line of sym those symmetry symmetrical points. So that is how you do the outlining. Again, in your design, you do want to have five layers. So let me go back to my dark yellow or my dark purple and just add a couple more levels to my mandala and I'll kind of put a little outline here and one here. So next I wanted to get into color. So I'm going to keep my mirroring turned on and I want to start adding color to my outlines. So I'm going to focus on coloring just one pie wedge and I'm going to go through each individual layer. Um, think about colors that go well with purple. So you can kind of go in the similar range here or you could do little accents of an opposite color like a, a yellow or like an opposite over here. So I've got kind of pink, purple. Let me set like a light yellow as well. That's not light yellow. So now I have some colors to choose from. I'm going to play with coloring on a separate layer underneath my outline. And I'm going to use the round brush, make it a little bigger so it's a little easier to fill. And I'm going to start by coloring with a pink. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kind of make it darker. So I'm going to fill in this whole area here. So I'm going to start to just kind of fill in and brush. I can even make this bigger to make it a little easier. But because it's on a separate layer, if I accidentally go over the edge, it's no big deal. So I can kind of go through, do a little rough fill of this area. But I'm going to use now my eraser set to a round brush, maybe make it a little bit bigger and go through and just kind of erase those areas that spilled over. But because it's on a separate layer, I don't need to worry too much about accidentally erasing my outlines. Um, so I'm going to just touch this up a tiny bit, come through, come through, back to my brush. Fix that little gap. Let me get zoomed in even more. So that is how you would use the round brush to get like a nice solid fill. But I do want to show you how to do things like airbrush to get a little fuzz. So I will use the blur tool to give it a little softness. And I'm going to pick a darker shade of pink. I could even do like that dark purple that I had here and think about that. But so now when I go in, I'm going to kind of shade, kind of add some fuzzy shading to it and it will go over the edges, but we know now that I can literally just crisp up those edges if I want using my eraser. So it's okay if the airbrush, goes beyond the edge a little because you can always just kind of erase and bring back in kind of a hard edge to that. So that's really nice. Um, so again, you want to think about filling all of these shapes. So let me just try and put in a little bit of this bright yellow here um, to give you, to show you what I mean by a little contrast. So this is a little pop. Color. It's different. It's opposite everything else in the design, which is really nice for giving a little contrast, gives it some springtime vibes. Um, you might need to go in and erase a little bit. So let me zoom out. So once you've added your colors, you can be done. Um, just wanted to show you how to save. Once you have finished your mandala and you're ready to save, uh, you're going to click these triple dots and then just click save. Uh, call this, you know, uh, 
spring mandala. So that will save it to the cloud, but you also want to download it. So you want to also click this little button here to download your picture. And now this will download the photograph onto your computer. Sometimes it glitches out and does this. If that is the case, um, you have to close my oats and try again because um, it will eventually do that. Or you can also use your screens screenshot tool to save it. Or you can share the link to me by copying the URL and sharing the link. So with that, I look forward to seeing everybody's drawings. Uh, please remember as you do this, you want at least five shapes within shapes and you want to choose three to five matching colors. These can be tints and shades of the same two colors, but you do want to have a little bit of variety so it's not just an outline. Um, otherwise, I can't wait to see your work and everybody have, I hope everybody's safe and well and have a great day.